In this tutorial, you'll learn more about traversing an ArrayList. Let's write some code to create an ArrayList. We start by declaring a variable of type ArrayList, and then initialize it with a new ArrayList object with the values 3, 1, and 8. This is a technique to quickly hard code values into the ArrayList. Now let's look at some code that will allow us to traverse the ArrayList. We can use a standard for loop. We start off by initializing i as 0, and we will continue as long as i is less than nums.size. The ArrayList nums has a size of 3. However, like arrays, ArrayLists are 0 indexed. That means the first index is index 0. The next one is index 1. And in this case, the final index is index 2. If we use the git method, it's important to make sure i is less than the size of the array list, so we don't try to access a non-existent index and crash with an index out of bounds exception. The size is recalculated before each iteration of the for loop. So if we add or delete elements in the array list during the execution of the loop, the size will change. In this code, we retrieve the value at each index and then output it to the console. However, we could also use the set, remove, or add methods inside the loop if we wanted to modify the contents of the array list. For the get, set, and remove methods, we can only access existing indexes. In this case, the existing indexes are 0, 1, and 2. For the add method, we can add one pass the last index. In this case, we could pass the add method indexes 0, 1, 2, or 3. It's important to be cautious when adding or removing objects while traversing an array list because it will cause the other objects to slide over and have their indexes renumbered. This can cause an object to either be accessed twice or skipped entirely. Now let's learn about traversing using a for each loop, also known as an enhanced for loop. The first part creates a variable to hold a copy of the values in the array list. The variable, in this case called temp, needs to be capable of holding the data stored in the array list. In this case, autoboxing automatically unwraps the integers in the array list so an int type variable can hold them. Next, there is a colon. Finally, the name of the array list variable or alternatively, the name of an array variable. A for each loop will cycle one time for each element in the array list. In this case, the loop will iterate three times. The first time through, temp will hold three. The second time, temp will hold one. And the third time, temp will hold eight. A disadvantage of a for each loop is that you don't know where you are in the array list. Without a counter variable like i, you can't check a value and then modify it because you don't know the index of the value stored in temp. While you can change the value of temp, temp only holds a copy of the data, so changing it won't affect the data in the array list. If you want to keep learning, click on the thumbnail for the next video. Otherwise, check out the full Java playlist. See you soon.